Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. You're watching Consider This. Now, the World Health Organization recently had advised the Malaysian government to prepare itself for the possibility of a wider transmission of COVID-19. Now, in a statement, the WHO said that while authorities must continue efforts to contain the spread of the virus, it is also um, time that all countries, including Malaysia, prepare for the possibility of wider transmission. To discuss exactly what this entails, we have joining us on the show Dr. Dr. Ahmad Faisal Perdaus, pres President of Mercy Malaysia, also a consultant physician, uh, consultant respiratory physician, and the head of the Cluster on Health and Emerging Hazards for the National Disaster Management Agency, or better known as NADMA. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Melissa. Thank it's you, good to have you here. Now, um, I just want to touch on that WHO warning. Mm -hmm. So that advice came uh, because the latest data showed that perhaps the virus is more transmissible than initially thought. I want to get your thoughts on that um, and the response of the uh, health ministry to the WHO warning. First of all, um, I'd like to reiterate a statement I made a few sessions ago in another interview that uh, at the present moment, the situation in Malaysia is under control. Uh, and the health ministry, as well as all the relevant agencies, the immigration department, the uh, health authorities, the police, are on top of the situation. And, and that's evidenced by, number one, the numbers we've had, which uh, is now stands at 19 uh, confirmed cases. Mm -hmm. And the fact that there has been no widespread uh, uh, spread of the disease in Malaysia. Um, there has also been no big jumps uh, okay. in, the, in the numbers, if you've been watching the numbers. Uh, we've not had any big jumps from day to day. In Malaysia. So that's the situation in Malaysia. Now, why the WHO came out with that warning was because a few days ago um, there was evidence that local transmission happening without uh, travel history to China was occurring in more than one place throughout the world, especially in countries around this region, mm. uh, which included Singapore uh, and, of course, included Malaysia in one particular instance. Um, there was also uh, local transmission happening in the UK as well as in France and Germany. Uh, although, although in Germany and the US there were already local transmissions before that okay. in, the, in the previous week. So these cases and these spread of local transmissions without travel history to China or without definite contact with Chinese nationals who've come back from heavily infected areas was the was the warning sign for the WHO, mm -hmm. if you like. Um, because if, if local transmission can happen in different streams without any travel history to China, without any contact with Chinese nationals who've just come back from these infected areas, then the chances of that spread being wider in other countries uh, is there. Okay. So that's I'm why uh, the WHO came up with that warning. Mm. And especially worrying was, uh, was the local transmissions, uh, were the local transmissions that were happening in Singapore. Uh, uh, this is because there was more than one stream. There were actually three uh, different streams of uh, local transmissions happening in Singapore. Although in Singapore, again, they are quite on top of the situation at the present moment. Okay. Can I ask you, I mean, wouldn't that be kind of expected of any disease that might have a, a source or a point of origin, but once it moves out of that, it, it just develops a life of its own. It doesn't have to be in, you don't have to be in Wuhan, as it were, to get the disease, right? You're right, and naturally uh, that would happen, but given the transmissibility of the disease at the moment and the novelty of the virus, and the fact that it has shown that it can be deadly, although the case fatality rate is still quite low, um, especially outside of China, WHO is very, very concerned about, about any local transmissions now happening at, a, uh, at, um, at any place outside of China, number one, and with any rate that is higher uh, than one to two uh, infected patients per primary source right. uh, because, um, because the, the R0 or RO or the transmissibility at the moment is thought to be between 2 to 4 um, in China yeah? uh, but much lower outside of China. Now if that rate is, is higher uh, than that then it becomes a problem 
and then it be, and then if it becomes higher than the numbers that are already in China, then there is this possibility of uh, what what's called a super spreader uh, of someone who can spread the infection to more than the average number. Right. Uh, that is what the WHO is quite concerned about. Doctor, is there consensus within the medical fraternity about uh, this disease, about the way it's, uh, the transmission, the, the way it's diagnosed? Is there consensus within the, the medical fraternity? There is general consensus. Mm -hmm. um, there, is, there are, however, certain points of, uh, of contention, uh, contention mm -hmm. and where people have differences of opinions. Um, there's definitely consensus that the disease can be, that the virus can be transmitted by close contact by droplets, there's consensus on that. There is no consensus yet on whether it is airborne. Uh, airborne meaning that it can actually fly, like the influenza virus. Yeah. Like aerosol. Aerosolized kind of way, yeah. Um, um, so so uh, transmission that wouldn't necessarily be in pro close proximity to the person? Correct. That? Okay. So that's not agreed upon? That's not agreed okay. upon yet. Uh, what's agreed upon is droplets, and that's why um, the one, um, the one uh, precautionary measure that all medical experts agree on for everyone to take is to wash your hands with water, with soap, with sanitizers if possible. Mm -hmm. At the very least with water uh, or with, and, and not to leave your hands uh, uh, soiled, yeah? uh, should you sneeze or cough or, or blow your nose or do anything like that. Yeah? Um, the, there is still some debate on the value of, uh, of face masks, for, for example, and where and when and what type of face masks. But obviously this differs again uh, between places where, where this is being discussed. Yeah? I want to ask you this mm. uh, very simple question. I mean, we know that germs are all around us, of but we don't fall sick and ill yes. all the time, yes. right? And so the question of your personal immunity or your health status and all these, how do they play a role in actually being able to be, uh, be being, to succumbing to something like the virus? Excellent question, Shira. So actually, um, in, in another interview which, uh, which I had recently on, on how a community should prepare itself against something like this, uh, we always start with the individual. So obviously the individual first. Uh, if you are healthy, then you, you will not only be able to look after yourself, you will also be able to contribute and help others around you. So you keep healthy, number one. You make sure that you are in the best of health by drinking well, hydrating yourself, eating nutritious food, uh, keeping yourself uh, fit by exercising, have enough sleep, uh, less stress, uh, do not get into situations where your health may be at risk. Uh, if you have any health concerns, uh, get them checked out immediately, make sure you're in the best of conditions. And then yes, uh, take, you know, on top of the nutrition and hydration, you take supplements if you must, if you need to, if you think that will be beneficial, remembering of course that supplements work long term, yeah, not short term. And, uh, and, and all these will boost your immunity. Now, if your immunity is at the optimal level, um, if you look after yourself well, and if you keep to the precautionary measures of washing your hands, uh, especially if someone around you is, is coughing or you're in an, you're in an occupation where uh, it necessitates you to meet people, etc. Or you wear a mask if you're in a confined space where there are people around you, like in an airplane cabin where people are coughing, or in a train cabin, in an MRT or LRT cabin, etc. You should be all right. And, uh, and the chances of infection should be very, very low. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, uh, this precludes the fact that you do not have any close contact with anyone right. who is actually really infected with the COVID-19 virus. Mm. Now, if you're actually in close contact, uh, if it's your spouse or your sibling who's living in the same house, or if it's your child or, uh, or your parent, then it's a slightly different story. Yeah? Of course, uh, the sooner you get this person, uh, 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 checked out medically and diagnosed and given the proper treatment and isolated if he or she is infected the better yes right. uh, but uh, most of us are not in that situation so okay. there's 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 no reason for us to also overdo things yes as long as we keep ourselves healthy yes and i do want to touch on that point shortly we're going to take a quick break we'll be back with more on consider this don't go anywhere